from the headquarters of Telesur in the Chinquito, Ecuador. This is from the south. I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. Supporters of Brazilian president-elect Jair Bolsonaro have celebrated his victory with fireworks in Rio de Janeiro. As soon as the results were announced, thousands of people gathered outside his home to congratulate him. Waving flags, they cheered for Bolsonaro as they listened to his victory speech. The military also took to the streets to celebrate the win. Now this country is going to move forward because of my captain, my president. He's not homophobic. He's a man of God. He's a man of character. He's not corrupt. He will fight for all Brazilians because for him there are no gays, lesbians, blacks or whites. We are a group. We are all united. Let's listen to what Jair Bolsonaro had to say just after his win was confirmed. What happened today in the polls was not the victory of a party, but the celebration of a country for the liberty. Our compromise that we make with Brazilians is to make a decent government, promoting the country and our con and our people. And I'll guarantee that it is, it is how it will go. Our government will be made by people who has the main proposition that is listening to me in this moment. The proposition of transformation Brazil in a big free and prosperous nation. You can have the certainty that will work night and day for that. Liberty is a principle, a fundamental principle. Liberty of living and being in the streets in every con space of the country. Liberty for being defended. Politic and religious liberty. Uh, liberty to be to have an opinion, liberty to make uh, options and be respected for them. This is a country for all of us, Brazilians from uh, na um, born here or in or from heart. Different oppos positions. As defendant of liberty, I'll guide a government that represents and defends the liberties of the citizens and to defend the laws. They are for all because like that will be our government, constitutional and democratic. I believe in the capacity of the Brazilian people who works in an honest way, that together we can, government, society, uh, construct a better government. government. That for future that I talk and I, that I believe is for a government that makes conditions so everybody can grow. And it means that the federal government will give a a step back, uh, reducing its structure and bureaucracy, cutting these uh, privileges so people can make uh, steps into the, for, in the front. Our government will break paradigms, we will confiate, have confidence in people, we will permit that citizens, those who are entrepreneurs, have more uh, possibilities to construct a new, fund, a new future. Bolsonaro has been elected as president with 55% of the votes. This according to the country's Supreme Electoral Court, with 99% of votes counted. Fernando Haddad of the Workers' Party lost with 44% of the vote. Workers', Workers Party presidential candidate Fernando Haddad conceded defeat in a speech to supporters in Sao Paulo following the victory of Jair Bolsonaro. He spoke about the huge tax ahead, saying that he and his party will work in the name of democracy and freedom. We follow with high heads, we follow with determination, we follow with courage to take our message to the five corners of the country, to the countryside and the city, in the peripheries and in the center, to the students, the old people, the LGBT community, the grandparents, women, whites and blacks, Catholics and evangelicals, those who belong to African and indigenous religions, to atheists, to all Brazilians, we, in a certain way, will carry the message that is worth taking and national sovereignty and democracy as we understand it is a value that is above all of us.
Therefore, we have a huge task in the country that is in the name of democracy, defending expression, defending the freedoms of those 45 million Brazilians who have accompanied us here. We have a responsibility to make an opposition putting national interests, the interests of all Brazilian people, above all, because we have a commitment to the prosperity of the country. We who help to build one of the largest democracies in the world, in Brazil, we have to have an obligation and will keep it. Meanwhile, supporters of Workers' Party have expressed their disappointment by the election result. They called the win a difficult time for Brazilian democracy. Sadness spread among Haddad supporters after the defeat. They cried and hugged each other as the results came out. They feared what the upcoming administration might bring to the country, especially for minorities. This is a difficult time for Brazilian democracy because it's becoming every time more fragile. We have to fight so all the nonsense the other candidates spoke about doesn't come true. We must not allow the nonsense to materialize. I believe it was a really unfair contest because it was activism against robots, truth against fake news, love against hate, and this is so sad. I am a person that believes in democracy, in the population's well-being, and people here are losing a lot. Riot police were deployed to contain protesters after the far-right candidate won the election. People took to the streets of Rio de Janeiro and, fire, and pol a riot police fired tear gas on protesters in Sao Paulo. Protesters yelled El Dinao, a known slogan against Bolsonaro. Many Brazilians are concerned that Bolsonaro will not respect human rights, civil liberties and freedom of speech. Some remember the government of Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva and his focus on social issues. I am in mourning, not for me, but for Brazil, which doesn't deserve this. It doesn't deserve this ignorance. The Brazilian people are ignorant. Brazil owes a lot of to Lula. Tension broke out between followers and critics of Jair Bolsonaro after the election. Both sides confronted each other in Rio de Janeiro after the results were announced. Supporters of the Workers' Party candidate Fernando Haddad continued to chant El Now or Not Him as Bolsonaro supporters celebrated. Let's go live to our correspondent Brian Mir in Sao Paulo. Hello Brian, thank you for joining us. What more can you tell us about the reactions on both sides to the results? Well, as the video just showed, uh, the Bolsonaro supporters are overjoyed and the uh, Haddad supporters are very worried, very sad, worried about the breakdown of the rule of law in Brazil. You know, worried that this election was just one more stage in a coup that started in 2016 with the illegal removal of Dilma Rousseff from the presidency. So we see that temper... Uh, tempers are flaring. And on one side, we have Bolsonaro supporters who are supported by the police and the military. It's estimated that 90% of the police supported Bolsonaro, for example. And on the other side, we have the people on the left who are kind of isolated and being attacked by Bolsonaro. And in his acceptance speech yesterday, he continued to attack the left as if they were an internal enemy in a McCarthyist style fashion, you know, like a Cold War era paranoia. Now, what, what we are expecting to happen today, do Bolsonaro or Haddad have any activities planned? Well, uh, Jair Bolsonaro is going to take, is going to rest today in his, his luxury in Baja, a rich neighborhood in Rio de Janeiro, and he's planning to fly to Brasilia tomorrow and immediately begin setting up his transition team. And apparently there's a list of 50 names on this team. He's already decided on four cabinet ministers, one of which is Paulo Guedes, an ultra neoliberal economist who used to work in the Pinochet administration in Chile. Now, Brian, we saw military vehicles driving through crowds of Bolsonaro supporters last night in Rio. How we should interpret that? We should interpret that as a sign that the military is 100 percent behind Bolsonaro. You know, uh, he's a planning on appointing three generals to cabinet positions, and his yeah, vice president yeah. is a military general. So we interpret this as almost as a return to military rule, really.
Thank you so much, Brian, for this update. Thank you. We'll take a short break now. More news in a minute. An occasion to enjoy the cultural diversity that defines our South American essence. Come along to find out the story behind these personalities, traditions, and artistic expressions that unite us as a whole. Real Lives. Friday. Only on Telesur. Welcome back. One Honduran migrant has been killed near the Guatemala-Mexico border on his way to the U.S. 26-year-old Henry Diaz was hit in the head by a rubber bullet shot by some Mexican security forces against the migrant caravan to disperse it. Several others were injured. Diaz was killed in the Guatemalan border in the city of Tecumán. He was shot with a rubber bullet, which can actually cause such a wound. We can't confirm the time he died, but we can confirm it was this wound that caused his death. On their part, the Mexican government has rejected the violent events that took place in the border with Guatemala. The Secretary of Interior said Mexico has respected migrant human rights as they tried to reach the southern border of the United States. He also said the country has provided migrants with resources for, for them to be safe and also so they can apply for asylum. Mexican government rejects the violence that happened in the border with Guatemala and reminds that the only way to come into Mexico is following migrant legislation. The Mexican government has respected the constitutional frame and human rights of migrants. Over a thousand people have marched in a silent caravan migrant towards the border of Guatemala and Mexico. The march took place in the municipality of Tecún, the last stop before crossing to the Mexican side. People participating have faced security forces as they arrived to the border. The Central American migrant caravan, making its way through Mexico towards the U.S. border, continues to advance. The main group of the caravan has reached the state of Oaxaca and are reportedly attempting to organize better. They have formed a security committee to maintain order and collect rubbish. We had a session with all of the migrants and a security committee of 300 people was formed for caravan security along the road to use only one lane to go orderly and to be here caring for everyone. The committee will be in charge of the trash and all other issues. Meanwhile, the Mexican president has announced that the government will offer migrants medical care, education for their children and access to temporary work as long as they stay in the two southern states. To support you, the government of Mexico is launching the plan, you're in your home. While in Mexico, you can receive medical attention and even send your children to school. You will also have a temporary official identification to do the procedures that you need while you regularize your immigration status. However, the migrants have rejected their proposals. They believe the majority of those who will apply will be rejected and deported. This is definitely a strong mandate. We all know that. It's more of the same, which is repressing, containing migration. There's no solution there. There will be now weekly non-stop flights from Russia to Jamaica. The measure came as Russian tourists no longer needed entry visas to stay in Jamaica for up to 90 days. The first flight by Russian airline Norwinds was welcomed on Friday with 300 tourists aboard. 
$1 billion worth of new investment is to be pumped into Barbados' economy through financing of various projects. These include the Sandals Beach Hotel, such as called Medical Complex, a new accommodation for students of Ross University. Early this month, Barbados agreed to host students who were displaced by Hurricane Maria's destruction of Dominica last year. Work is scheduled to start in January. Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley has delivered the keynote address to the annual conference of Barbados Labour Party. Speaking at the Lodge School on the second day of the 80th conference, she, with she presented her five-month report card. Monday called on supporters to stay focused and say, the, and say the party was given a mandate like no other in the history of the country. The Labour Party took office last May 24, winning all 30 seats in Parliament. Doctors from, ben doctors from Venezuela and Cuba have arrived in Suriname as part of the petro Caribes Regional Integration Agreement. They will provide aid to low-income patients suffering from eye diseases. The office of Petro Caribe said via Twitter, the Venezuelan Medical Mission plans to perform approximately 27 surgeries to patients with various diseases within the framework of the Petro Caribe Cooperation Agreement. More than 2 million people have attended the Day of the Day parade in Mexico. Allegorical floats, giant puppets, skull face paint, and main characters from Mexican culture line up in the Paseo de la Reforma in Mexico City. Celebrated for a third time in a row, this year's team focused on migration with features African and Spanish migrants. The Mexican Day of the Day celebrations are known worldwide, famous for their colorful traditions. Thirteen moralists are taking part in the urban art festival La Puerta del Sur in Chile. The urban festival La Puerta del Sur is taking over abandoned public spaces. This festival aims at bringing art out of museum halls and into the streets in a bit for the creation of interesting content and social criticism. The idea began with a conversation among several painters. We were painting all over the world and for different festivals. The idea with this festival is not only to paint, but to go beyond the paint and create something like what we are creating now. We are changing the visual landscape with the help of several artists that are sharing their art with the city. Thirteen muralists painted more than 1,300 meters of walls and stones of the Mapocho River in capital Santiago, a space full of symbolism and history. This river is a scar, it is a backbone in the city, but it is also a border of Santiago between the poor and the rich. This river has a lot of violence. Bodies were found here during the militia coup. My parents left for exile. The stories of the military coup, popular unity, and this river are part of my life and my childhood. The secret police of dictator Augusto Pinochet tortured and murdered people in the riverside, a painful practice that has continued. Do you remember the case of the Colombian who got killed and was thrown here? Well, this river has accumulated all that is bad with this city. What we are doing here is just returning a little bit of love to the river through street art. The Venezuelan-Chilean muralist Kalala has come back to return part of that love. The mural that I came here to do represents a meeting between Venezuelan dancing demons and Chilean dancing demons. This is my way of explaining the encounter of my roots, of my history, my childhood, and all those stories that I have heard all of my life. But he's not the only one. Peruvian muralist Olfer shows his own story as well. The river has a mystique because they found an Inca mummy here, where the river begins. Above that, the Incas settled here because they reached these parts. Everyone has united for this Latin American encounter. The Chilean poet Raúl Zurita reflects through his verses that will be engraved on the murals. When everything is finished, these stones will remain. They will survive the waves, the centuries and the dreams, just how the powerful and the stubborn hearts will last. Stubborn like these artists that on the stones of the river they found a place to paint their best weapon. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this.
Telesur brings you special interviews with social and political personalities. Monday, from Washington. Tuesday, from Mexico. Wednesday, from Caracas. Thursday, from Quito. Friday, from Havana. Analysis about our continent's reality. Weekdays, only on Telesur. Welcome back. A Lion Air passenger jet carrying 189 people has crashed into the sea shortly after taking off. The plane was on its way to Pangal Pinyang from Indonesia's capital, Jakarta, when it lost contact with air traffic control. Rescuers are retrieving the remains of the victims. Rescuers are also trying to... This morning I instructed search and rescue agency chief military and national police to conduct a search and rescue operation as soon as possible for the victims. Meanwhile, tearful relatives of passengers are wearing in the airport where the, where the flight was scheduled to land. They say they are waiting for official updates on their family situation, but search team officials are estimating there are no survivors. Saudi Arabia's public prosecutor is in Turkey to take part in the murder investigation of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. He's expected to meet with Istanbul chief prosecutor Irfan Fidan and visit the Saudi consulate where Khashoggi was killed. Reports in the Turkish media have alleged he was killed and dismembered by a team sent from Saudi Arabia to silence him. The Saudi prosecutor traveled to Istanbul after acknowledging, acknowledging last week that the killing was premeditated. The Pope has called for the eradication of hate after Pittsburgh shooting. Here's more on that and a look at some other stories from around the world. Pope Francis has denounced the attack on a Pittsburgh synagogue in which 11 people were killed. The attack happened when a shooter burst into the Tree of Life synagogue and fired at the worshippers. The Pope spoke to pilgrims in St. Peter's Square after Mass and called for eliminating hotbeds of hate. Dear brothers and sisters, I express my closeness to the city of Pittsburgh in the United States of America, and in particular to the Jewish community, stricken yesterday by a terrible attack on the synagogue. May God welcome the dead in his peace, comfort their families and support the wounded. All of us in reality are wounded by this inhumane act of violence. May the Lord help us to put out the hotbeds of hate that flare up in our societies, strengthening a sense of humanity, respect for life, moral and civil values, and the holy fear of God who is love and father of all. Leicester City fans have paid tribute to the owner of the football club who was killed in a helicopter crash in the United Kingdom. Vijay Shivadhana Prabha was among five people aboard the helicopter when it crashed into flames after a Premier League match on Saturday. He was popular with supporters after buying the poor performing club in 2010. It then went on to win the Premier League title in 2016. Fans laid shirts and flowers outside the stadium in tribute to him. Indescribable where it is, but so much money into the club, has brought the club up from receivership, put the money in, built the team, won the premiership, and it's, the future's looking bright, or obviously it was looking bright, and you know, he's done everything he can. Israeli security forces have opened fire on Palestinian farmers, leaving one person injured. Armed forces shoot, uh, shoot against a group of unarmed farmers doing their daily work in the north of the Gaza Strip. Violent events were also reported near a refugee camp in central Gaza. Sri Lanka's president has dismissed his prime minister, accusing him of conspiring to kill him. The president has chosen his former political rival, Mahinda Rajka Paksa, to form a new cabinet. His supporter denounced several conspiracies, but this is the first time it was confirmed by the head of state himself.
More than 100 environmental activists have been arrested for defending the deforestation of the Hamburger Forest in Germany. The protesters were detained for blocking the railway tracks in the forest, where a mining company is operating. The company is extracts more than 40 million tons of lignite coal annually, but activists say they will continue to defend the 600 hectares of forest that is left in the area. Heavy rains have, close, have, have caused floats and landslides in the Italian village of Ovaro and its surrounding areas. Rain has damaged houses and re uh, properties in the area of Friuli Venezia Guglia region. The local government is calling on authorities to help with the damage. We come to the end of this news brief. These and many other stories you can find at our website at telesurtv.net slash English. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. Thank you for watching.